Hey, it's your old pal Chris. I uh, just finished basically barely uh, getting my uh, my numbers for today on the uh, on the Apple Watch after it was a Friday night, you know, and I still want to get them. Um, and I uh, before that I finished watching uh, it, the uh, it chapter one. I think technically it, it's, it's funny that it's it. Whatever, it's it chapter one, um, which uh, I picked up as part of a, a bundle with um, The Shining for like 20 bucks, 10 bucks. I don't know, there were a bunch of them on, uh, I think that was the $20 one. Because um, I wanted to see it and I, I'm, I'm interested in, in uh, adaptations um, and I'm interested in Stephen King's work. Um, and uh, so adaptations of Stephen King's work <laughs> are a uh, particular interest to me. Uh, never seen The Shining, so um, I'm glad to have that uh, ready and, and waiting for me whenever I finally decide to, uh, to finally watch it. Um, and I haven't read it, um, although I was familiar with the story and uh, familiar uh, to some extent with the, uh, with the miniseries that came out in the 80s, I think. Uh, with Tim Curry and uh, and all those those cats, um, but this was good. I, I really I really dug the the coming of age uh, part of it, and in a sense, <laughs> um, all of the uh, the Pennywise stuff um, felt kind of uh, superfluous to me. I mean, I, it I felt like well, in order for it to be a Stephen King story, we need to have some horror and some some gore. Um, but, you know, I just recently rewatched uh, Stand By Me, and uh, so this kind of reminded me of that in a way. And so it was very interesting for me to see those two kinds of King stories, the coming-of-age story and the horror story, um, all in one place here. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's not that the, the Pennywise stuff was superfluous is probably the wrong word, but it's, it was secondary to me. You know, as sort of like that that shit was par for the course, and uh, what I wasn't expecting was the was the coming of age stuff. Even though I I had read about that in uh, in advance. Um, and what a great cast! Um, the 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 acting in that uh, in that film was was quite good. Um, so while I was doing the workout, I watched. Uh, a little bit uh, of one of the extras, um, like a 13, 14 minute documentary, um, talking to Stephen King about the generation uh, of the book and about writing it. And um, I don't know, this all sort of dovetails in with, uh, with thoughts I've been having about my own work. Uh, recently, I've got a book coming out in November uh, called The Seven Wives of Silver, which is um, pulpy and genre and kind of Western. Um, it's, it's a really weird one. Um, but it's getting back to, to my roots. I mean, the very first things that I wrote were comics and horror stories. <laughs> and so uh, injecting a little bit of comic book noir, um, Western, time travel, all the, all the stuff, throwing it all in the pot and, and, and coming up with this latest book is, uh, is really, it's a lot of fun for me. And I, I see myself doing more of that in the future. I've got one... Um, one more sort of basically realistic novel in the can, but then after that, the thing that's like way off in the distance that's just barely begun uh, is way more of a weird fiction. Let's just call it weird fiction. It's not uh, anything like hard sci-fi or hard horror or whatever, but it's got some time travel. It's got some, uh, some genre elements and, um, I don't know. It's it's nice to be getting back to those roots um, in my own writing after years of trying to be uh, a more serious literary writer. Um, and I still value everything I learned from being and trying to be a more serious literary writer, but I'm having a hell of a lot of fun getting back to stuff like like what King does in, in It. So, cool way to wrap up the week and to uh, start off Labor Day weekend. Catch you on the flip side.